a good whatever time of the day this is today that you are watching this. If it's to start your Christmas Eve morning, if it's to, to go into the evening and end the day on Christmas Eve, if it's even Christmas Day, we want to welcome you today. Uh, we want to welcome you to this time together. And I especially want to welcome the Ogala Church family. And I want to welcome the Waukini Church of God family. If we're being honest, um, we know that we'd probably rather just be with our families that we're used to worshiping with, especially because it's Christmas Eve. Not that we don't like to be together, but because this is that service each year that I think so many of us look forward to. And it's honestly hard not to be able to be together in a full sanctuary, singing Christmas songs together, probably lighting a candle together, just being reminded and reflecting before we spend time with our families. But at the same time as it's hard, I'm thankful that we get a chance to be together, that we get to come together, that I get to work with Pastor Shelby and, and, and share this time with you and join together. And I'm thankful for the technology that is going to make that happen. And, and we're going to make the most of this time. And we still believe it's a time that God's going to honor and that God's going to bless, uh, even with the way that it's set up right now. Yeah, and the, the great thing about the way we're doing this and with our technology is you get to personalize this. If you need to pause this, rewind it, hear something over and over again, you have the power to do that with our technology. And the great thing is, is you get to make it personal. Just because it's new and different doesn't mean it's not effective and good. And so use this with your family. If you want to sing a Christmas carol with your, with your family, do so. If you want to uh, stop the recording and just spend time in prayer and invite the Holy Spirit to take the words that you hear and, and let them uh, just meditate on, on them and place them in your heart, do so. The, it's going to be a great night. Um, you know, like Jared said, this is normally a night we would be doing something in our own churches but tonight, two churches are coming together, maybe more, and we're excited about what God might do with this. Yeah, so we want to invite you for a moment to just push pause. Push pause uh, with whatever you're watching on and say a prayer that God would use this time in your hearts, in your mind, and just what's happened over the last year as we enter this day of celebration in this moment. Uh, push pause and pray with your family. Maybe before you even push start again, if you got a favorite Christmas song to sing together, sing that song together in your own home with your own family and lift your voices to God and worship still. And then just prepare your hearts to reflect and to remember the opportunity that we still have that we're celebrating during this season. Approximately 2,750 years ago, the world was experiencing a time of extreme darkness, of great distress, and a time of heavy gloom. In the lives of those living during that time, oppression felt real, and hope, not so much. God knew that the people needed encouragement to keep going. And so he sent a man with some words of anticipation and possibility. That man was a prophet named Isaiah. And the words he shared were words that spoke of better opportunities ahead. He told them that in the days ahead, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace of the greatness of his government and peace, there wouldn't even be an end. 
700 years later, during another dark and discouraging time, these words became true. Luke says that the time came for that baby to be born. And she, Mary, gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and she placed him in a manger. In other words, as the Apostle Paul shared, when the right time came, God sent his son. And so on a night which probably wasn't as silent as we often sing about, the child that was spoken of as the light became flesh and bone. He entered our world and he brought with him the possibility for a change that was real. Even in the midst of the chaos of a childbirth done in a crazy and stressful situation, I wonder if those who were present truly experienced a moment where all was calm and all was bright. I wonder if deep down they knew there was someone in their midst who gave them a genuine chance to experience light through having the experience of genuine hope. Through having the experience of genuine love and of joy and through this light I wonder if they had the experience of genuine peace A little over 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born, Isaiah had prophesied that his name would be Prince of Peace, but it was anything but peaceful. A madman in charge issued a decree to murder every two-year-old and younger child, boy, in the Bethlehem vicinity. Throughout Jesus' life, the religious leaders were plotting uh, to try to find a way to try to kill him, and they succeeded. And after his death and resurrection, peace isn't all that available. It doesn't seem available. We've had church persecution from the very beginning. We've had holocausts. We've had world wars, genocide. And all this might cause to ask, if Jesus was the Prince of Peace, did he fail? I don't want to sound heretical in any way, but someone might ask that. To help us understand that Jesus didn't fail, let's look at that title, Prince of Peace, a little closer. In Hebrew, it would have been the word Sar Shalom. Tsar is where the Russians get their word czar. And, and the Romans took a little bit further and they got the word Caesar from it, like Julius Caesar. Tsar means the one in charge, the captain, the lord, the general. Shalom means peace or tranquility or wholeness. And so we're going to work with the definition of the one in charge of peace. That's who Jesus is. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. It's his peace because he's in charge of it. He gives his peace, he's in charge of it, but how do we receive it? I want to tell you a story. About 18 years ago, I went on a youth ministry retreat in the mountains in Colorado. And one thing you need to know is I think the mountains are majestic. They're glorious. They're beautiful. But I don't like being in them. I, one of the things we did there was we went on a hike. I'm not a hiker. In fact, 
I don't like heights at all, and mountains are pretty high. Two days before we left, I, heard, I read about a, a mountain lion attack in the mountains that I was going to. So needless to say, I wasn't in a good spot. We were up high. There were mountain lions attacking at the time, and I, I, I didn't want to be there. I was at anything but peace. I wasn't comfortable. But on our hike, there was a guide, and he had a gun. And it, it made me feel better because if a mountain lion was to attack, he had a gun. Without the guide, knowing where he's going, without someone being in charge, I would have been terrified. I would have probably gotten lost and not up here today doing this. But because I was with the one in charge, I knew if I stayed close to him, walked where he walked, did what he did, chances are I would make it home okay. And so that's what I did. I stayed close because he knew where he was going. He knew what to do in, in a dangerous situation. And most importantly, he knew how to get home. Without the one in charge being with me, I would have been lost. But because there was someone in charge that knew what they were doing, knew where to go and knew where to get home, I felt at peace because I was with an expert who was in charge. If you want to experience peace or tranquility, be near and trust the expert who is in charge of it. Be close to the Sar Shalom. It's been a little over 2,000 years since the birth of the child that we're celebrating. And here we are again, finding ourselves in a place as a world where we're in deep darkness. We find ourselves in a place of much distress and if we're honest we experience a lot of gloom right now heavy gloom however we have an opportunity unlike those who heard these words 2750 years ago we have an opportunity that's different than what they had because now we have the one that was spoken of with us we have the one the prophet said was to be coming with us. Today, it is up to us to choose whether we're going to live in and whether we're going to live with that peace. As Shelby mentioned, it's up to us as whether we're going to walk with him. It's our choice to experience that peace. In fact, that light grew up this child grew up to teach and to share and to guide and direct. And one of the things that he shared, this Prince of Peace, the one in charge of peace, told his followers, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. The part that gets my attention is do not let your hearts become troubled. It's your choice. The Apostle Paul picked up on this later. And in his words, he says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. It's our choice as to what we are going to let our hearts be. And what they will be is determined by who we will truly follow. There are so many voices in the world telling you, What's going to make you happy? What's going to make you whole? What's going to give you peace? But through all those voices, God's voice says, Here I am. Here's what I give you. I give you the Prince of Peace. I'm in charge of peace. Listen to his words in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. He says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation... By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And again, in Romans 5, 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you've been saved, you have peace offered to you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, in the first part of verse 14, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace. Notice where peace is found. It's found when we are close to God, when we are focused on him. It can't be found when you're far away from him. You'll experience peace when you're near to him. Jesus is the one in charge of peace. Let's trust him and let's live in peace. It's your choice. Peace or chaos. Hope or despair. Light or darkness. Will you follow the light or continue to listen to voices in the darkness. So that's our question. And that's our challenge this Christmas Eve as we can continue to live in the midst of a weary world. As we close out a year of uncertainty and uneasiness and really many moments of pain and of disappointment. And as we head into a new year that we're hoping is going to bring better days, our challenge is that we would realize that we all have a choice to make. We all have a choice as to who we're going to actually listen to. We encourage you to listen, even if if it's just for a day, to those who are sharing a message that is centered around the great gift that we are celebrating. Truly turn your eyes and ears off to everything being shared around us and spend a day looking toward, talking to, and listening from the one who is our wonderful counselor, our mighty God our everlasting Father, and the Prince who is in charge of our peace. And you know, as we do that, maybe, just, just maybe, we'll truly be able to sing along with others from our past. When they sing those words, a thrill of hope. A thrill of hope as a weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Those are some amazing words, but it happens as we fall, fall on our knees, and hear, truly hear the angels' voices. Then we'll be able to say, O night divine, O night when Christ was born, O night. O night divine. That's our hope. And that's what we want to leave you in hope for for a merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Peace.